episode five. Today, I'm so happy to welcome friend, floral designer, and Slow Flowers member, Ellen Seagraves. Based in Bethesda, Maryland, just outside the DC Metro Center, Ellen is a floral designer with more than 15 years of experience. She holds a BFA in weaving and textile design and often incorporates elements of these disciplines in her floral work. Ellen's aesthetic encompasses a wide range of styles to suit the various needs of her clients. As a student of Ikebana, she often applies those design forms to her own work. Her arrangements have been featured in a large number of of venues, including the White House, the French Embassy Cultural Center, the National Botanic Garden, and Blair House. I'm delighted to share our conversation recorded earlier this week. It will be followed by a short demonstration that Ellen filmed to share with us. She shows some of her designs and techniques. So let's jump right in and get started, and I'll share our sponsor thank yous at the end. Well, welcome back to the Slow Flowers Show with Deborah Prinzing, and I'm so excited today to have it. Ellen Seagraves as my guest. Hi, Ellen. Hi, Deb. So nice to be We're, here. It's great to have you. We're in the in like the recording studio virtually. And uh, so uh, we're going to talk a little bit about what Ellen's doing. And then uh, at the end, we'll have a bonus video that she's going to create for us, um, showing some of her design aesthetic and design uh, techniques. So Ellen, we've known each other for many years. I can't remember yeah. exactly how we met, but... Um, probably through chapel designers. I think so. Yep. Yeah. And so your whole business is named Ellen Seagraves Chic Floral Designs. And it's nice that your name is in there. I think that's smart branding. Um, You're in Bethesda, Maryland, but your market is mainly greater DC metro market, right? Yes. Yes, it is. Yep. So tell us about your studio. Uh, What are all the pieces of the high? Well, finally, let me think. In 2000. 20, we moved across the street from a house we'd been in for almost 30 years to my in-laws house. They, they had moved out and it's a very big piece of property. And I said, well, if we're going to do this, I really need a studio because I had been working in a one car garage that was crazy and doing weddings and huge events. I I remember I went there with you when we had the summit in DC in 2018. So I picture that house. I picture that neighborhood. You've moved across the street. Correct. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I so can I picture you on the better, map. I have a much better studio with like real locking doors <laughs> and a real, you know, we can move around without without getting in each other's way because I, I do have a great assistant, Kathy Houston of Artful Florals, who's been with me for a long time. Okay, great. So did you build a new structure or how did you create that? We did. We built a new structure. So now my husband has his sort of workshop and I have my workshop across the, the yard and it's it's wonderful and it's a it's a double lot so we have oh. lots of plantings too. It's great. That's what I was gonna say when you talked about uh having a larger lot, my first thought went to I know you harvest from your garden a lot and did you expand your garden? We have, we have and now my husband's into growing flowers. He's really a good gardener and he grew lots of vegetables, particularly when his parents lived here, because that's that they had always done that. Yeah. Now he's getting into flowers and I'm so excited. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. I know, right? You can be the head gardener and he can be the undergardener. Or the, director. Uh, <laughs> the director. So what are the, um, how do you describe your studio? I, I know you're not a huge wedding and event designer. You're really um, a, a couture designer for uh, private customers, right? Right. Well, it's funny. Um, my daughter went to private school. And I was not doing flowers commercially at that time. And there was, I was doing a lot of volunteer work there and they were having a luncheon and someone had put together some centerpieces from just stuff that was around in the event closet. And it, I shouldn't say this, but it was horrifying. And I said, can I fix these? I did. And bang, I had a business. It was crazy. Wow. And I have to say, I learned on the job. I didn't really know very much. I started taking every book out on floral design I could find, but I did well enough that the catering managers passed my name around from private school to private school. So now we service six private schools regularly. Wow. And we have gotten all of our private clients um, organically through these schools. It's really been something. 
And not to name drop, but these are the schools of like the uh, hoi polloi of DC, the polit- politicians and the yeah. movers and shakers, right? Yes. yes, we were happy enough to do the um, graduation flowers for both Obama girls. And so we got to see them all dressed up. They were so cute. Oh, my goodness. Um, oh, that other- just gives me the shivers. I love it. Yeah, it's, it was fun. We've done flowers for talks by um, Christine Lagarde, who was head of the IMF, I believe, mm-hmm. Adlin Albright, who spoke at the boys school nearby. So yeah, you know, we, it's uh, the glitter is, is remote, but it's there. <laughs> <laughs> it's a few degrees of separation. I'll that's you. Correct, right. Um, but that's an interesting niche because um, any, a lot of these organizations, institutions, schools, they have fundraisers, they have galas. You're doing, you're not just doing one-offs. You're do, sometimes doing large no, events. No, no, no. We, we do large events for them. And in the private school world, fundraising is huge, particularly uh, these days. It yeah. costs a lot to run a school. Yeah, I had no idea until I got behind the scenes. And so they they fundraise a lot and we're lucky enough to do that work. It's lots of fun. Wow, that's great. Um, did you uh, also find that during COVID you started doing more everyday flowers? Was that a part of, uh, did that grow for you? Because I know that, like, for example, some friends of mine needed flowers in DC and I told them to call you. Like, you will do these right, right. individual oh, yeah. orders. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're always happy to do that. And yes, I mean, obviously the school's all shut down. We didn't, we didn't really do much for quite a long time, but we did have a steady stream of individual people asking mm-hmm. for flowers. So that was mm-hmm. very nice. Mm-hmm. That's really great. Well, um, how would you describe your aesthetic, Ellen? Well, I have to say it's sort of all over the place. I really, I've studied Ikebana. I've, I have a, um, I have my AIFD credentials. Yes. I remember mm-hmm. that. Congratulations. It's a big and- deal. It was a big deal. And then I went on to get my EMC credentials as well, Belgium with uh, Tomas de Brun and that program. So I like all styles. I like garden style. I like a Gabbana. I -hmm. like contemporary style. So I I really don't, um, don't, I try not to pin myself down, but I will say that my textile background really informs a lot of my more experimental work. Right. We are going to share some photos and maybe even in your video, you'll share this, this some of the ta- uh, textile methods that are using, but that you're using natural products, right? Like yes, branches and um, right. reeds and stuff. Yeah. So that's really interesting because I, I come out of a textile background too. And I, um, <clears throat> you know, not as much of a BFA background because you have a BFA in, yeah. in textiles. Um, mine is more like sewing. So, you know, to me, I've always thought of, you know, clothing design. I've always thought of gardens as like Mm -hmm. equivalent of a, of a quilt. And you're thinking, you're thinking more three-dimensionally, I think, um, which is a little bit more of the weaving background, right? The fiber. Maybe more of a micro level instead of the macro big picture. (laughs) I'm looking at the little weaving techniques in a very small way, I guess. And I also think all the education you talked about, kudos to you. I mean, like this idea that um, perpetual learning is kind of fuels your creativity is, it makes so much sense to me because you are trying to push yourself, maybe because you didn't start out going to, you know, floral design school, you kind of backed into it in a funny way. (laughs) Yeah, no, it's, it's been wonderful. And I've been lucky enough to study with it, Tommy Gillum and Gregor Lursch and um, and locally Terry Godfrey, who I have to mention, who is um, an incredible teacher. She's she's um, AIFD and EMC as well. And really, without without working with everybody, you just don't don't get mm-hmm. anywhere. I mean, mm-hmm. for me, mm-hmm. you know, I I've worked with Holly Chapel, and because I'm lucky enough to live close to her, so right. you've been out at hope to see her. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I think what brought us together originally was uh, you had um, an event for this organization you're part of. And actually, apparently you're the president <laughs> of an IFDA stands for, in, is it Independent Floral Designers Association? Yes. Yes. 
Okay. So you were doing an event showcasing local flowers to floral professionals. And this was like five years ago or something, and you had been doing it. Um, I, I didn't realize this until I, I just, we just chatted before we recorded. You've been doing it since 2015. So mm. what, talk a little bit about how those events came together and like, I, and what is IFDA and, and like how interesting to have a kind of a, Floral, floral design centric group start bringing in uh, a conversation about local flowers. That, that all just fascinated me. Right. Well, I'm not quite sure how this germ of an idea started. Um, but in 2015, we decided that we would every September have a program on local flowers. Mm -hmm. I was buying from plant masters and Carol and Leon Carrier are really the grandparents. Um, in um, your area. Local yeah. Local flowers in our area, as well as I was buying from Dave Dowling, too, when he had his farm. And I thought we should really showcase these folks. So 2015, we had a um, roundtable discussion with Holly Chapel, Kathy Gents of Washington Gardener Magazine. Oh, yeah. And um, Drew Asbury, who at that time was the head gardener at for cut flowers at Hillwood Museum and Garden. And the next three years, we had vendor showcases. Um, I'm looking at my list here. I we think had, that's when that's when I wrote about it once for Florist yeah, Review. It might have been I more like 2018 so. or 17. I think so. And one of those, I think we did a wine, like local wine presentation also, which was really fun running around to local vineyards. Yeah, talking. It's agriculture, right? <laughs> agriculture. <laughs> Um, in 2019, we did a farm tour at Dilly Dally Gardens in Sykesville with Diane Lutz. And we had a program by Angela Dara. And then people made bouquets and it was mm. lots of fun. Mm. Of course, 2020, we didn't do anything. 2021, we went to Red Barn Flowers owned by um, Patty Frazier. And then last year, we went to Tanglewood Flower Farm in Boyd's. Jill Coots is the... Um, owner there and it's just fantastic what they grow and it's so listen i love my wholesaler mm -hmm. they're very good to me they've mm -hmm. been very very good to me over the years but to see things that are a little different and unusual and not stiff and with a grace of what you find growing a little more naturally i think for a lot of people is really appealing and i think our members are thrilled with that too that's interesting because IFDA's membership, you said, is around 60. Um, is it mostly people in the D.C. metro market or is that number wrong? It is mostly people here, oh. but because of COVID in, I think, April of 2020, we had to make a hard pivot to Zoom. Yeah. And Molly Chapel was our first speaker. <laughs> And boy, I felt like over the past couple of years, I feel like I've learned how to run a television show because almost all of our meetings, except we've done a couple of like the visits to the farms now, mm -hmm. have been on Zoom, but wow. it's expanded our reach. Mm -hmm. So we have Canadian members and someone from Indiana and from Kansas, from Chicago, people in Florida. So it's amazing. Someone in Japan. I mean, it's just, it's quite something. Yeah, because when I first met you, I thought, oh, this is a regional group. And they're, you're talking yeah. about regional design, you know, issues like, you know, dealing with venues and, you know, how to source and all. But it's really just another professional floral designers organization that anyone can join, right? It has become that way. It has become that way. And we have um, seven flower farmers who are members this year. No, they're, they're in our region. I mean, some are as far as Hagerstown, which is about 80 miles away um, in yeah. Maryland, Eastern Shore. But yeah, no, it's wonderful. And we welcome, we have a big tent. We have hobbyists, flower farmers, teachers, um, event people, people who do weddings. We, we welcome everybody. Mm -hmm. Well, I was going to say that having flower farmers join? First of all, are they farmer florist? Most of them, are they interested in doing design? Some of them. Okay. Some of them. Some of them are just growers. Some of them also do flowers too. Yeah. But the benefit to them is to meet their customers and understand what, what floral designers need probably, right? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yep. Yep. 
That's awesome. Well, if I lived in the DC area, I would be a member because, but I should just join online and, and come to your uh, events because yes. I just, I love you guys. Um, I think you took a real leadership role, Ellen. I don't know how you fell into it when you said you were already buying from Dave Dowling when he had his farm, you're buying from uh, plant masters, the carriers. Yes. Why were you doing that? Was it because you wanted these quirky, more artistic, more like textile <laughs> you know, friendly elements or um, we're just curious about what they were growing. Right. Well, I met Dave because he did the flowers for one of my friend's daughter's weddings. Hmm. And I did a couple of things. And the mother of the bride, who's a friend of mine said, Oh, you've got to go out and see this farm. It's so cool. Well, then I went crazy because he had such nice stuff. <laughs> yeah. He um, fell down the rabbit hole. <laughs> yeah. And then Plant Masters sells out of a um, the farm woman's market in Bethesda, Maryland, which has, I don't know, almost 100 years, I think, started in the 20s. And so I would shop there for food and occasionally buy flowers from them. And then as things got more serious, I buy more. Wow. And I've got to know them, of course. Yeah, yeah. That's because I know Carol has been part of one of your showcases, right? That's correct. Yeah. Yeah. They're they're great Slow Flowers members. That's really great. I love the the affinity and the connection. And um, yes, you said you your wholesalers are very good to you. Are your wholesalers also trying to buy from these farms, or are most of the farms more more likely to sell direct to a florist? They have some local flowers. But I, what I know is that there are flower farmers around here forming cooperatives, mm -hmm. which really is great. So if I mm -hmm. need 100 dahlias of the same color, one farm might not have it, but I might be able to get it through the cooperative. Right, right. Is that Old Dominion? Is that the one that you shop at? Oh, yes, that's Old Dominion. Yep. And is that um, geographically, like how how far it's is that from you? Far. There, you can, um, I think they have a, a place in Fairfax for pickup. And then Grateful Gardeners is really only 40 minutes from me. Yeah. So I was there yesterday. And I love that. You know, it's wonderful stuff. <laughs> well, they, uh, Tom and, and uh, Sarah have recently been on the uh, podcast. So, um, yes, I, I was, they were showing us on camera since the first of the year what they had in their greenhouses. And it looked like a lot was coming on. So you're going to design with some of the things you picked up there and, and we'll see it in the yeah. video. It was so much fun to see and see their success with this aquaponics system. Mm -hmm. Just mm -hmm. remarkable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, what that's doing for you is giving you more of a, a season extension. You're not just growing or designing with field crops that you yeah. normally see annuals in the summer, you're able to get some earlier greenhouse um, material. Yeah. Yes. Well, you post a lot of your own designs on Instagram and um, <clears throat> I love seeing what you're doing because it is so garden friendly, especially this time of year. If it's something's blooming in your garden, um, you're going to figure out how to use it. Yeah, even if it's just branches, right. right? Right, right. Well, I'm lucky that I have a lot of stuff. You know, I, I think I did a piece with witch hazel last week. That caught my eye. Yeah. And my quince is coming on and, you know, um, hellebores. So yeah, I, and it's all I plant is stuff that I can use. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah. And those, I mean, obviously you don't have acres or rows of those things, but you have enough right. for maybe a, 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 an on-demand design or something, a right. birthday celebration. You can, you can pretty much design with what you have available. Right. Right. Yeah. But I, I mean, that's what, what I heard from so many designers is there's not, it's hard to get volume and quantity for a big event. So <clears throat> buying from a, a larger grower or a co-op is really how you can get those multiples. And that's really, I mean, it's, this time of year would be hard, right? Or I guess tulips might be the one crop that people are getting in volume. Yeah, that well, Grateful Gardeners yesterday had tulips. They have marigolds coming on that were enormous. Apparently, they really love the aquaponic system. Yes, oh, I they, love that. They had dill and um, hyacinth. They had oh. some beautiful things. Oh, that's wonderful. That's really great. So, if you did have a gala, a fundraiser, you probably could get mostly local. I could. I could. Yeah. Yeah, that's really cool. All right. So what's coming up this year for IFDA? I know you're the president. <laughs> I think um, you've been the president for a while, haven't you? I have. I have. But I have a really fantastic board. Okay. 
and I could not do any of it without them. And we have a great membership. It's a great group. So we, coming up in February, we have um, Sue McCleary, and we're super excited about her. And will that be a virtual presentation? It will be virtual. Everything mm -hmm. for the moment is virtual. Okay. We might have um, a couple of in-person over the summer. Yeah. Well, you talked about your field, your field trips and your uh, like offsite, yes. you know, things. Yes. So that makes yes. sense. Yes. I think it must make it easier. I mean, I, my, this happened with, with my local horticultural society here in um, Seattle, the Northwest Horticultural Society. We have members from all around the world now coming to all these online classes and then we can bring lecturers in who we could never have afforded to fly to Seattle. They're us. from the U UK or whatever. And it, yeah, it all works. It's so smart. We like to, to gather in person, but this is kind of yeah. providing a new a new uh, level of uh, access, I guess, and and also, you know, education for people who, like in Seattle, no one wants to drive at night in the winter. So <laughs> that's the, <laughs> it's like the online things are really popular, and the 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 uh, in person things, you know, who wants to deal with traffic? So I'm sure yeah. DC, DC's like that too. It is. And it's been the silver lining for IFDA. If there mm -hmm. was a silver lining in COVID, mm -hmm. it's that we we sort of had the, the brains and, and the technological um, know-how in the yeah. membership that we could we could switch to Zoom and make it work. And we too, we've had speakers from Canada and um, Romania. Oh my goodness. All over the place. So wow. well, like, Romania, awesome. who's now moved to Brussels, but anyway. <laughs> Close, but it's well, been and, great. Yeah, and Sue's from Ann Arbor, and so that's yeah. a you know, yeah. that's a she'd probably rather you know do a, a lecture and not have to get on an airplane too. Wow. Um, that's really great. And I also um, wanted to ask you to talk a little bit about the blog you guys started uh, on the IFDA site because that's available to the public. Anyone can read that, right? Yes, yes. Lisa Dirks, our our member who um, owns Apricity Flowers north of here, north of Burtonsville, uh, Maryland, mm -hmm. came to us with the idea last year that maybe she'd write a blog on local flowers. And we welcome that. So yes, you can find it on our site, which is ifdaweb.com. And she updates it as she can, but it's always really wonderful. And she talks about other growers and, and what's going on in the um, local flower growing world. Well, it's awesome. I'm looking at it right now. And she's just posted like a, earlier this month, local flowers for Valentine's Day, which is sort of top of mind Right. in, you know, it's winter in DC. Like how can we find local flowers? And she's listed, I don't know, like 10 different farms and what they have available, who the contact mm -hmm. is. And, um, you know, also provided, um, other sort of larger, um, websites like the Maryland grown flowers, um, site that, that is, I think, is that run by the state agricultural department or something like that? Associated, um, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've, I've stumbled across that before, but I'm really happy to have that resource. And also just the example to show that, um, this is, um, it's a member, you know, it's a member service to, uh, to IFDA members, but obviously it's open to the public so we can all look at it. Mm -hmm. Um, that's really great. So um, you're going to uh, share a design or designs in your video. Can you describe or like tee up what you what you're thinking about? You showed me some really interesting woven structures uh, when we were online yesterday. Out of one was twigs, but I didn't know what that other material was. Well, I started making baskets out of veneer. My husband has a, a millwork business and does a lot of veneering, and a few years ago started bringing the leftovers home and said. Do you want this? <laughs> of course, he's, I said yes. He's thinking like an artist. I love it. Yeah. So I started weaving big baskets uh, from veneer. So I, I'll have a piece of that. Um, what else is I going to show? One of the first things I did was a woven sort of liriope. Um, I called it like a tuffet. It was okay. sort of this dome that I put flowers on. So it's like so it becomes we, like a, a, a grid or a matrix, but it's also yeah. part of the design. Yeah. So I'll, I'll show that. Oh, great. And I did sort of a big um, woven um, flat sphere mm -hmm. that's on feet that mm -hmm. I've also decorated. So great. Oh, well, we look forward to that. And thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Um, 
I just have to ask you about veneer. It is, I, I'm picturing the thin, it, the thin sheets of yeah. wood-based product, right? Yeah, wood, real wood, I think, yeah. And so are you cutting it into strips to, in order to yeah. move it or does yeah. it come like that? You no, know, I cut it into strips and if it's wide, I cut it down um, mm -hmm. vertically also. And uh, yeah, let's see. That's so creative. I mean, you you see people buying those spools of like flat metal ribbon, like, you know, at the floral right. supply place. It kind of has that vibe, but it, this is 100% natural. Yes, it's 100% natural. And he had some eucalyptus. I'll show a picture of that. Yeah. Because I, I think, unfortunately, it was so dry, it fell apart. But it was such a beautiful gray color. Mm. Mm. And it is available on Amazon. I mean, mm -hmm. it's not it's not something that just that just um, millwork people can buy. You can, yeah. you can buy it, or go make friends with your local cabinet maker and see if you can have their leftovers. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, that's great. Well, we'll um, when we share the video in the show notes at slowflowerspodcast.com, we will have links to you and your social places to the IFDA resources we've uh, discussed, including the blog, and um, you know encourage people to maybe check out the organization and get involved and attend some of the workshops. Do you ever teach for IFDA or are you kind of behind the scenes? Um, I, I, I do teach occasionally. I, we did a lot of, um, during COVID we instituted design challenges mm. and we were meeting every week, mostly because I was frantic to connect with people yeah. and I hated to be home all the time. I don't think you were the only one. <laughs> yeah. So, um, we did have little demos, hmm. like five minute demos is here. I'm going to make this and, and then you make it. So I, I did a lot it. of teaching then and, and now I'm more behind the scenes. Yeah, that's okay. I love it. Um, anything else I didn't ask you that you want to include and share? Uh, I don't think so. I think we covered it. I'm looking at my notes. I, I think we've um, talked about everything. I, you're, I, you know, I used to come to DC so often and I have not been back since yeah. before COVID. So I need to get uh, myself, uh, figure out how to swing through on one of my East Coast trips because I'd love to attend one of the sessions and love to see your new studio, but we'll see that yeah. on the video. To, we'll see that yeah. on the video tomorrow. Okay, right. Right. great. Thank you so much. This has been so much fun. Well, thank you. Hey, that was awesome. Thank you, Ellen. And now I'm going to pop over to the um, video she shared. Give me a second and we'll add that so you can get to see it. <clears throat> Here we go. Hi, I'm Ellen Seagraves and this is a continuation of my conversation with Deb. As I said in my talk with her, I have a degree in weaving and textile design and in my more exper experimental work I like to play with weaving techniques um, and I'm going to show you a few pieces today. So I wove this sphere out of bind wire. I made Gregor's spider web wire form and wove through the spikes with about two rolls of bind wire um, and then attached it to a footed metal ring. What I like about a piece like this is that it really sort of shows my, my gardening aesthetic. Um, we're big gardeners, we're not the neatest gardeners. We like to leave a lot of detritus, leaves, branches, etc., on our beds to overwinter and break down, we hope, and enhance the soil in that way. And this piece for me is evocative of just what my beds look like when the, when the new growth starts to poke up in the spring. Now we do eventually clean them off, but not that well. We're, we're um, a big fan of of wood chips and sort of a crazy look to our our gardens but we we grow a lot of stuff and this is some of it i guess actually fern skeletons coral fern which we do not grow clematis vine smoke bush some birch leaves 
And then of course these beautiful anemones poking up through, which is really just my style. So that's my first piece. I'll show you a piece in progress. Uh, I did get rid of my loom eventually, just recently, sort of. And, but I did keep my yarn because I have beautiful, beautiful colors of linen yarn that I'd never be able to get again. Um, again, working with these metal rings, this is unfortunately one without feet, but this works for this purpose. My idea for this piece, I'm going to do four or five of these um, that portray the levels of soil and the different look of the topsoil in this area. We have a lot of red clay under our topsoil here, so I'll do that one. And then as they go up, hopefully they'll get a little more um, green and, and brown and, and healthy looking. I'll stack them up on some kind of risers and then have some flowers sort of poking up through it to again sort of portray one of my garden beds in early spring. So it helps. Don't throw anything out. That's my uh, that's my MO for better or for worse. But you can always find a place for something and a use. My husband has a millwork business and a couple of years ago he brought home rolls of veneer that he was going to throw out and said, do you want to do something with this? And of course I said, sure. So I started weaving these big round forms out of them. This one is still in progress. This is eucalyptus, which is just the most beautiful silvery gray. And it's sort of dried up though and breaking. So it's been hard to work with, but I just love the idea of these kinds of baskets with just a very little enhancement of flowers. I don't think they need much. They're so much fun and you can make them huge. I mean, I cut my strips of veneer to make them somewhat easy to use, but you could make something enormous. You can get this on Amazon, you guys. You don't have to try to have a mill, mill workshop. So this is a minimally decorated one, which has a flat bottom. This is maple veneer. And with just some clematis vines woven through it. And I like this kind of simple decor on a piece like this. The piece is interesting. It really doesn't need a whole lot, but it is fun to experiment and see what you can do with something like this. Again, coral fern and clematis. My last piece is a reprise of a piece I did several years ago, a long time ago. This is a woven, for the lack of a better word, tuffet. <laughs> I don't think I've ever used that word in a sentence, except talking about this piece. Um, I do use a foam ring as a base. You need something really strong to get your weave started to work against. It's very hard to weave just um, in the air, as it were. If you think about making pot holders, you need that, that frame with the teeth to, um, to stretch your pot holder loops on. This is the same kind of idea. Uh, it's worth experiment experimenting to think about what else you can do with this to, to make this maybe on a, a, uh, a grapevine wreath even. And that's something worth trying. Anyway, it's just a plain weave, which is over one, under one. It's very easy. Um, and decorated with an ombre of 
ranunculus, bicolor ranunculus. Um, these are from California. And I got them at Potomac Floral Wholesaler, who I did not mention yesterday, but they are have been my wholesalers for many, many years. And when I didn't know much about flowers, the people there were very good to me and helped me learn a lot. So I, I appreciate them very much. Uh, there's nothing like these ranunculus to really get you ready for spring. Anyway, thank you. Thanks so much, Ellen. That was great. And thank you everyone for joining us today. You'll be able to watch the replay video and see images, many images of Ellen's floral designs in the show notes at uh, soulflowerspodcast.com for episode 596. Uh, we'll, we'll post those when the audio podcast is posted on February 8th. Let's thank our sponsors whose financial support brings the Soulflower Show to you. This show is brought to you by slowflowers.com, the free online directory to more than 850 florists, shops, and studios who design with local, seasonal, and sustainable flowers, and to the farms that grow those blooms. It's the conscious choice for buying and sending flowers. And thank you to our lead sponsor, Farm Girl Flowers. Farm Girl Flowers delivers iconic burlap wrap bouquets and lush, abundant arrangements to customers across the U.S., supporting U.S. flower farms by purchasing more than $10 million of U.S.-grown, fresh, and seasonal flowers and foliage annually. Discover more at farmgrowflowers.com. The Slow Flowers Show is a member-supported endeavor, and I value our loyal members and supporters. If you're new to our weekly show or our long-running podcast, check out all of our resources at slowflowersociety.com. I'm Deborah Prinzing, host and producer of the Slow Flowers Show and the Slow Flowers Podcast. Next week, you're invited to join me in putting more Slow flowers on the table, one stem, one vase at a time. The content and opinions expressed here are either mine alone or those of my guests alone, independent of any podcast sponsor or other person, company, or organization. Thanks so much for joining us today, and I'll see you next week.